the Brazilian freshman of the Stanford class of 2024. And since we're in this application season, we decided to record a video for you guys to check out what the international student essays look like for Stanford admissions and specifically the Brazilian ones. So here we go. Fala pessoal, tudo bom? Como é que vocês estão? O meu nome é Guilherme Davi e hoje eu vou ler minha carta para meu roommate, meu colega de quarto, que é uma S que se tem em Fortiped todos os anos, que tem entre 100 e 250 palavras. E a minha foi mais ou menos assim. Dear roommate, before we proceed, I must confess something. I come from the valley of death. In the early 1980s, Cubatão was the most polluted city in the world and earned this infamous nickname after the birth of several brainless babies. While I do have a brain, Cubatão has molded in ways that defines that define who I am today. First, be advised that the bed near the window is mine. Living in a mangrove has a particularity. If you build something too tall, it will sink. Consequently, many short houses crowd my city, creating space for the sun to come in. So, there's nothing that pleases me more, more than morning meditation sessions while being sun-kissed. Also, prepare yourself for some random facts I will throw out during our time together. Quick warm-up. Did you know that Cubatão is the only city in my country that makes extensive use of mathematical jargon in order to, to order bread? For some reason, French bread is called media or average in English. If you have some similar oddities to share, I can sit for hours listening to you. I forgot to mention, but Cubatão is a city in Brazil. And as a good Brazilian myself, I always have a foot hack under my sleeve. Give me 10 minutes and a microwave and you'll be delighted by my Brigadeirão, a pudding-like chocolate dessert. I'm confident that we can team up to deliver high-quality, late-night snacks for others. Anyway, fun times are to come. I can't wait to meet you. Best, Guilherme. Back where we started from, California. An idea or experience that makes you excited about learning. Like any hearty Brazilian family, mine loves meat. But on this night, I broke the mold, curious to try the Futuro Burger, Brazil's first ever plant-based burger. My father's raised eyebrows and sympathetic look sparked a very spirited family discussion, inspiring my investigation of meat alternatives for my Scholar Society presentation. I had no clue that such a complex web of intersecting subjects could fit so snugly between the two halves of a bun. Initially, I examined the ethics of eating meat, why the topic was such an emotional issue and why people resisted change. I then decided to look at cultural norms, anthropology being one of my keen interests. The simple experience of trying a burger rapidly became an exciting learning experience as I discovered intertwining perspectives ranging from philosophy to psychology to sociology. But there was even more to uncover. The environmental impact of agribusiness, the economic contribution of the meat sector, the industry's political influence. The Futuro Burger eventually evolved into my presentation, Can Meet This Meat Become a Thing for People Who Aren't Into This Sort of Stuff? I was thrilled, but not surprised, by the vigorous debate that ensued. This kind of multifaceted, unsuspectingly intricate puzzle is what I find so exciting. I love analyzing a simple burger, historical movie, controversial news article through the lens of different disciplines, slowly patching the pieces together to form a complete picture, or one that is incomplete. It's missing pieces directing me to more intellectual discovery and adventure. August 19th, 2019. As I leave my sociology class and head to lunch, I realized the sky was completely covered in ashes. It wasn't dark as if rain was approaching. It was dark as if someone painted the sky a different color, and it was hard to breathe. Growing up, I used to love dystopias. I learned what happened. Smoke, tribes, and black hinterland settlements are losing their land to agriculture and burning to the ground. The Amazon, El Chaco, and Pantanal are being burned for cattle, and my city saw its effects. Suddenly, Huxley was staring at me beneath his round glasses. I got what he was saying. Blind faith and progress has an unthinkable, natural and human cost. But I began discovering why I was so passionate about dystopias on May 2018. I saw a video named The Next President of Brazil. 
He's a national hero, Bolsonaro said, about the most cruel torture of a recent military dictatorship, Coronel Ustra. All he did was protect Brazil against the communists. Ustra tortured our ex-president Dilma Rousseff by introducing an alive mouse inside her vagina. Suddenly, there was George Orwell, sitting next to me with his dusty suit, teaching me about violence. In his announcement last week, the president said the Ministry of Education would cut funds in the humanities. As films are being censored and research is being discouraged, bread pourers split a pile of books burned and swirled before my sight. Latin American democracies matter, and so do our forests. Describe your last two summers, summer 2019. Through visits to Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Poland's March of the Living, I bore witness to human nature's extremities. Summer of 2018, I underwent orthognatic surgery, and after spending two months limited to liquids and 70 days indoors, I learned that I am self-sufficient and stronger than I ever thought. What five words best describe you? Curious, constant, efficient, empathetic, and unapologetically sarcastic. What do you read? listen to or watch. My bookshelf holds Tolstoy, J.D. Salinger, Carol Dweck, David Eagleman, Malcolm Gladwell, and Yuval Noah Harari. For news, I consult O Globo and the New York Times. My playlist spans from Ba to Radiohead. I binge watch 007 films, The Office, and Explain, plus TED Talks and Bon Appetit on YouTube. Extra hour in the day. If it takes 10,000 hours to master a skill, with 365 extra hours in a year, I could shorten my journey into musical mastery by four years, having plenty of time to restore my spirit with sleep, meditation, and family. Name one thing you are looking forward to experiencing at Stanford. Sitting with new friends in a booth at the Axon Palm, eating what can only be described as a monstrous pile of chicken tenders. We watch as the timer inches ever closer to zero, indicating the arrival of Cal, the ground shaking as the campus erupts with big game fever. Name a historical moment or event that you would have liked to have witnessed. Standing at the source of the Blue Nile, I see fire. Specifically, the first occurrence of Homo created fire. I approach. Documenting whether it's accidental or purposeful, observing how this knowledge is communicated through the tribe, and attempting to discover how it will be passed down through generations.